Hi class, I wanted to do another contour integration example. Let's look at the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of dx over 1 plus x to the fourth. This is very much like the example we did in class, except that we have an x to the fourth and an x, instead of an x squared. The first step is to analytically continue from the real line, that is z equals x, to an arbitrary complex um, variable z. So the function is 1 over 1 plus z to the fourth. Notice that this is the ratio of a polynomial of degree 0 over a polynomial of degree 4. So we know that we can add this contour of the semicircle in infinity, either in the upper half plane or in principle even in the lower half plane, and we can take the contour along the real line and turn it into a closed contour, and since the degree of the denominator is more than 2 greater than the degree of the numerator, this piece that we add infinity doesn't, uh, doesn't give any contribution. So the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of dx over 1 plus x to the fourth is the contour integral on the closed uh, upper half plane of dz over 1 plus z to the fourth. So it's therefore equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the residues in the upper half plane. The residues occur at the isolated singularities of 1 over 1 plus z to the fourth, that is at the poles of 1 plus z to the fourth. So z is equal to the fourth root of negative 1, or i pi over 4, 3 i pi over 4, 5 i pi over 4, or 7 i pi over 4. Only the first two, i pi over 4 and 3 i pi over 4, are in the upper half plane. So this integral is 2 pi i times the residue at e to the i pi over 4 plus the residue at e to the 3 i pi over 4. Since each of these, since there are four zeros of uh, the denominator, each of them is a simple zero, and therefore each of these poles corresponds to a simple pole, Therefore, I can evaluate it by taking the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator evaluated at the pole. So this gives me a 1 over 4 times z cubed in the denominator, which for e to the i of pi over 4 is 1 over 4 e to the 3 i pi over 4. And for the other, uh, for e to the 3 i pi over 4, it's 1 over 4 e to the 9 i pi over 4. Adding these together and just computing, we see that this integral is actually equal to pi over the square root of 2. Now let's look at an integral that's very similar, the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x cubed. Analytically continuing, 1 over 1 plus x cubed goes to 1 over 1 plus z cubed, but we're only integrating from 0 to infinity, so from the origin all the way out to infinity to the right. The question is, how do we turn this um, integral along the real line, along the positive real line, into an integral along a closed contour? We know we can add a big circular arc at infinity, and that contribution is going to vanish, but we somehow have to come back to the origin. So let's imagine we come back to the origin along an angle, along a ray, which makes an angle theta with the real positive axis. In that case, this integral along the entire closed curve is this, con this piece here, which is the original integral we wanted, plus a piece that vanishes plus the piece coming back. The piece coming back, we can, we can parameterize z as x e to the i theta, where x starts from infinity and goes to zero. So it's the integral from infinity to zero of dz becomes dx e to the i theta over one plus x cubed e to the three i theta. Now this term here doesn't look a lot like this, but we realize if we choose a theta so that e to the three i theta is equal to one, like theta equals two pi over three or four pi over three, then this denominator will just give us a 1 plus x cubed. So each term will actually be proportional to one of the integral that we want, the integral from 0 to infinity of dx over 1 plus x cubed. But in this case, we get a 1 multiplying it. In this case, we get a minus sign from flipping the integration. And we get an e to the i theta. We chose theta equal to 2 pi over 3. So this is 1 minus e to the 2 pi i over 3 times the integral that we actually want. That means that this integral uh, that we actually want can be written as the closed contour integral divided by this, and by the residue theorem, that contour integral is 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of 1 over 1 plus z cubed inside this uh, third of a, uh, of a circle contour like this. Now, the poles of 1 over 1 plus z cubed occur at the zeros of 1 plus z cubed, and the zeros of 1 plus z cubed are at the cube roots of minus 1, z of e to the i pi over 3, or e to the i pi, or e to the minus i pi over 3. Of these three zeros of the denominator, which are the poles of the function 1 over 1 plus e cubed, only one of them, the one that's in e, at e to the i pi over 3, sits inside the contour that we're actually interested in. 
So therefore, the sum of the residues just becomes the residue at e to the i pi over 3. Since the function is, again, the ratio of two things, one of which, which doesn't vanish at the, at the pole, and the denominator, which has a simple zero at the pole, the uh, residue can be calculated by taking the numerator and dividing by the derivative of the denominator evaluated at the pole. The derivative of the denominator is just 3z squared, so the residue is 1 over 3 times e to the 2 pi i over 3. So if we multiply our prefactor, which is the 2 pi i from the residue theorem, and this constant, 1 over uh, 1 minus e to the 2 pi i over 3, uh, coming from this prefactor, we find that the whole integral can be written like this, which when we compute gives us 2 pi over 3 square root of 3, which is gratifyingly a real number, which may have been a surprise given all the factors of i that existed in all the places and the funny contour we had to choose in order to actually evaluate the integral.